Well, as we continue that conversation, job openings edged lower in July, showing that there may be some cooling in that hot, hot job market ahead of Friday's jobs report. Now, the Fed is looking for some relief in the tight labor market as rising wages are helping to keep inflation sticky. Now, stocks popped on the news as investors have priced in a soft landing, hoping inflation can come down without causing a recession. But our next guest isn't so convinced that an economic slowdown can be avoided. Joining us now is Eddie Gabor, Key Advisors Wealth Management CEO and co-founder. Good to see you, Eddie. So you, you say that there's no way we can get to this 2% inflation target by next year without a recession. Break down your base case for us. So look, in my opinion, when you look at the percentage basis, you have to drop to get down to 2%. In our opinion, the only way you can get there is by demand destruction. Um, I think the Fed obviously knows that. Now look, if they ultimately change and kind of flinch and say, well, two and a half or three percent they can live with, that completely changes our opinion in regards to a recession. Uh, but again, I don't see how you can get that rate of change to drop that much uh, by next year uh, without a recession. So right now, we think the consumer is showing some weakness uh, when you look at credit card debt. Then you have student loan payments having to start back up in October. Uh, so I just don't see it. I hope I'm wrong and we don't have a recession. Uh, but one thing I am convinced of is the market is not priced for a recession. Um, and if we are correct in our assessments, uh, it could bring quite a bit of volatility. And lastly, look, the jolts numbers causing some reprieve in the bond market today. But we're concerned that we're going to see a reacceleration of inflation when you look at oil uh, prices going up back into the 80s. So we're not out of the woods yet with this fight with inflation. And so I think the bond market's going to continue to be very volatile as we get these mixed signals. Yeah, it seems like the market's are priced for AI improving productivity and perhaps the Eagles winning the Super Bowl this year. But Eddie, as we think about more broadly going forward, this potential recession that, that you're calling for, are we talking about a shallow recession or, or one that's more mild from your projections? So whether it's mild or shallow, I, I think the market, when you look back at history, whether it's mild or shallow, it's not good for the equity markets. You knew, normally will see a double digit drop in regards to the markets from the levels that they are when the market finally prices in uh, the recession. And that is really our base case that that's still in the cards. Now look, without question, the market and the economy has been much more resilient than what we anticipated coming into this year. Uh, so it may be a story for the first half of next year. Uh, but again, when you follow the rate of change here and you're looking at the direction um, where the consumer's going, being in a consumer-driven economy, uh, things aren't heading in the right direction. They are decelerating. And we certainly keep hearing some of these warning signals in what we heard from some of these earnings calls and some of the forward guidance that they were looking at, sort of teetering on the edge of how the consumer is faring right now. And when you couple that with, as you mentioned, student loan repayments, credit card debt reaching, reaching some of these record highs that are also causing some concern here, when do we see that start to show up more significantly in earnings? So I think you'll see that in the fourth quarter of this year is when you'll really start to see that. And again, if I had to pinpoint a time period where you'd start to see that weakness recognized in the market, uh, that's probably when you'll see it. So we'll still get some uh, rips and rallies and then some dips and maybe sideways. But I think in the fourth quarter is when we're going to start uh, to really see that. And look, real estate is going to show some cracks as well, too. You have mortgage rates at over 7%. You're going to have a problem in the regards to those folks that have mortgages at 4%, 3% right now. I don't think you're going to see them putting their house on the market to sell anytime soon. What's your top trade if we do see a recession? Would be buying the long end of the treasury curve, because if we see a recession, you're going to see the long end really drop in our opinion. Um, and that's going to be where you'll get that initial pop. And then you'll want to rotate into your higher beta plays. Uh, right now, we're heavy into uh, money markets, frankly, because of the yield that they're having, because we're still not convinced that the volatility in the treasury market's over yet. Uh, but once that gets priced in, you should see the long end of the curve really come down. And Eddie, what are some of the key questions that some of your clients are asking about the environment that they're in and how to play that right now? So the biggest question we're getting from our clients, because our clients, many of them are retired, so this isn't their first rodeo, is they see what's happening under the hood economically with their businesses, where they live, um, and their local economies, and they're scratching their head as to why the market this year has ignored those fundamentals. So the disconnect between the fundamentals 
and the market is the number one question that we're getting right now. Um, so we continue to talk about patience and patience is one of the hardest things to have as an investor, but with short term yields paying what they are, it makes being patient a lot easier today. For companies that we've continued to monitor over the course of the earnings season, many of them citing macroeconomic challenges and, and how it could impact their company. But I think more broadly, for anybody who's looking around the world at where they're also being impacted, not just by the, the U.S. and the domestic front, but also the global situation, are there, are there pockets of this market that you could see turning earlier because of their exposure in, internationally, particularly here, Eddie? So it's interesting you bring that up. We are bullish on India. Uh, that's our top equity position that we have, frankly. Uh, because of the weakness in China, uh, we believe that India is going to be the winner due to that. And I think you're going to see more and more companies invest in India and less in China. Uh, so India's economy looks like it's going to be accelerating over the coming quarters because of that dynamic. So it's not. Uh, so there are pockets, in our opinion, where you can make money um, in this environment again, but we think we are here domestically have some challenges. So we're being more cautious on the domestic front. And as you said, it's easy to be at least patient at this point when you're looking at some of these yields. Always great to see you, Eddie Gabor, Key Advisors, Wealth Management CEO and co-founder. Take care. Thank you.